Great. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited to have this conversation today. I'm so excited to dig in with the three ladies that you see on the screen, which are three wonderful kindergarten teachers. Um, as you are joining us, you know Zoom. I don't need to go through the details of it. Um, but we do want to make sure that this webinar is useful and productive for you. I know you guys are all busy. You've got little kids running around. Um, so please make sure that you make this make the most of this time by using the chat, using the question and answer box. Um, we will save time at the end for a question and answer. So to the extent that you're, there's a burning question that may not get answered today, please go ahead and put it in the Q&A. Um, we will make sure to add that to our list for the end of the session. Um, in addition to that, we've got our chat and we would love to hear who you are, where you're coming from, what you um, are interested in talking about today. Um, we have a lot of great info for you today, um, hoping um, that you walk away from today's webinar feeling really excited about this kindergarten journey that you're about to embark on, as well as really confident that you are prepared and that your child is prepared um, and that it's going to be a great year. So um, if you can get started by introducing yourself in the chat, what makes you most excited or nervous about sending your, uh, your child to kindergarten? Um, and what do you think kids need to be to be able to do to be ready for kindergarten? What is kindergarten? I'm sorry. What does kindergarten readiness mean for you? Um, while you're going ahead, going ahead and kind of introducing yourself in the chat, I will introduce myself, um, and then I'll have these three ladies introduce them. I am Stacy Gershkovich. I have the pleasure of running Success Academy Sharing Wing, the Robertson Center, uh, where we do programming like this to bring educators and families and um, folks who are involved in education tangentially together to talk about the issues of education that are true and near and dear to our heart. Um, so we're excited to have you today. Um, and let's go ahead and get these ladies introduced. Anyone want to start? Um, hi, I'm Miss Romano. I'm teaching kindergarten for my sixth year. Um, I just finished a master's in childhood education, and I'm very excited to apply what I've learned in these past two years into my teaching practice for the next school year. Hi, my name is Aliyah Tarnovisky. I've been a teacher at Success Academy for the past 10 years, and I love teaching kindergarten. So I'm excited to talk about um, all the things that you can be really excited about um, for the upcoming school year for your child. Hi, I'm Christina LeBan. I work also at SSS Academy at Springfield Gardens. I've worked there for six years. I've been in kindergarten for six years and I love it. I love seeing um, the kids be successful and just learning a lot. So really excited to join you guys today. Great. Um, I love that you guys are jumping right into the chat. So please go ahead and do that. It is totally up to you. If you want, um, you have an option of sending your chat to everyone. Um, there's a little blue button on the bottom right, or you can just send your chat to the host and panelists. Um, so that's up to you, whatever you feel comfortable with. I'd encourage you to send it to everyone because we'd love to get a sense of who else is out here um, and who else is in a very similar position as you. Um, I think sometimes we feel just better knowing that we are not alone in the way we are feeling and the thoughts we are having, um, but I'll leave that up to you. Uh, I see we have a lot of families who are joining us at um, Success Academies, and we have a lot of families who are not joining us at Success Academies, um, and I just want to make sure you know all of this content will be relevant no matter where your child is going to school next year. Um, we're super excited to have you, and I know we've got some educators on the call um, and some folks who are involved in education in other ways, so welcome all of you. Um, we really hope to make the most of this time. So again, use that chat, use that Q&A. Um, so let's get started. Um, ladies, first of all, before we get into it, what is the purpose of kindergarten in your, from your perspective? And I know it's a big question. So um, give us one or two thoughts. What is the purpose of kindergarten? I think the purpose of ki kindergarten is like to be introduced to the magic of school and the magic of learning and I really think it's the place where kids fall in love with learning and with school. So it's that like first taste of it. Yeah, I think, you know, as I'm seeing in the chat, you're kind of just thinking about all these things, like what does my kid need to know before they come in? What, what should I be working on? But really just hyping up your child or if you have uh, twins or going into kindergarten, just getting excited to learn and so to be around 
other children. It, it's going to be a magical year. Yeah, to echo what the ladies have been saying, it's definitely setting the foundation for their learning journey. It helps them really get excited about going to school and it, um, they start to learn social skills. So it's really um, just setting the foundation for the rest of their learning career. Uh, this is great. I'm so excited to dig in. And I should mention my youngest of three is starting kindergarten this year. So this topic is near and dear to my heart. In fact, this is the time of year where all of my mom groups start kind of having this conversation of my child doesn't know how to do this yet. Should I be worried? My child can do this. Um, are, is this enough? Are they ready? What should I be doing? Um, and so again, the hope is today we'll be able to answer all of those questions so that you feel really confident um, that you are ready for kindergarten um, and, and your child is ready for kindergarten um, and get really excited. And, and again, that's the purpose of one of the purposes of education uh, of, of kindergarten is just to get kids really excited about learning um, and the start of their school year. So um, one of the things that we're very aware of is that particularly in this past two years, we haven't had the opportunity necessarily to be in the schools as much as we typically are. Um, and so before we got started, we thought it was really important that we could all as parents get a little bit of a mind movie of what kindergarten even is like. Um, maybe some of us haven't been in a kindergarten classroom since we were kindergartners ourselves, um, or maybe it's been a couple of years, um, or maybe um, you just wanna remind yourself of what kindergarten is like. So. Um, these ladies, I want to thank them in advance, open their classroom doors to us via video. Um, and in just a moment, we're going to play that video um, and get a chance to make that mind movie of what it is like to be in kindergarten. Um, and while we do that, feel free to add to the chat. And I see you guys are, are in that chat using it. So keep using it. Anything that excites you about what you see, anything that surprises you about what you see, and again, any questions that pop up, put them in the Q&A and we'll make sure we get those at the end. Action. breakfast today? No. Okay. This is our class. This is our morning work that we do each day. Okay. Good morning, kindergarten. Money meeting. Everyone say hi. Hi. Okay. Keep the beats here. We Stepping stones. Stepping stones. Number stories. Snack. Theater. Guided reading. Mindfulness. Read aloud. Read aloud. 
Writing, science, blocks and play, dismissal. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Aaliyah. That was Aaliyah's classroom. Um, and those students took us on a little tour. I see some questions coming in. I see some um, chats coming in. Um, I hope uh, that gave you a little bit of a mind movie. Of course, it is a short snippet, but a little bit of a vision of what it is that it feels like to be in kindergarten. And I will preface this by saying that video was taken a couple of weeks ago. So that is not the first day of kindergarten. Um, those kids have worked really hard to get to the place that they are today, the TH sounds and all of those fun things. So um, just a preface there. Okay, um, we're gonna watch another quick video. Um, we wanted to hear from kindergarten students themselves. Um, and so we asked these teachers to take some videos of their kids um, so you could hear directly from kindergartners themselves. So in just a moment, we are gonna play that video. While we do so, again, anything that's surprising, anything that excites you when you watch that video. Action. Well, my favorite part is when we learn that whole alphabet to A to Z. Um, dancing. <laughs> My favorite part of, about kindergarten is eating ice cream when it's when it's an ice cream party. Probably lunch and then lab time. Play, science, dismissal. Math is my favorite thing to learn because I learn different things and I know how to come all the way to infinity. You know how to count to infinity? Mm -hmm. Wow. I learned to count by two. Mm -hmm. You can practice the name. Oh good, that's a good one. I got you. <laughs> They need to do the homework every day and knows letters and, and numbers. I want a parent to know that you can pick some flowers in the grass like, the, like, like in your backyard. Be kind to your friends. Zion, or Spider-Man, sorry. So when your brain listens, that means you listen to your parents mm -hmm. and your teachers. Mm -hmm. Read. Mm. So you can get things in your mind. Mm -hmm. And no talking <laughs> when the teacher is talking. Okay, um, I could watch them all day. Um, we have some other clips that we have to get to, but um, we wanted to make sure we saw a little bit. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was watching, I could totally see my four-year-old, uh, her name is Riley, in that video saying some of these things. Um, and I think if you'd said that six months ago, I would say, oh, no way. But she's getting to the point where I think in the last month, they really have matured. Um, and this is why kindergarten does start at this age. So um, again, um, we're going to go and do some panel questions. Um, we want to hear directly from the kindergarten teachers who know it best. Um, but why don't we get started? Um, again, if there's questions that we don't get to that you're curious about, I saw some questions coming in already in the chat in the Q&A. Uh, please go ahead, keep those coming. We'll get to as many as we can. Um, but let's get started with some questions that I know I've seen parents asking. I've had conversations with parents in the past. Um, ladies, from your lens, what is the most exciting or challenging thing about being a kindergartner? I think in the beginning of the year, when everyone is coming into school, probably some really challenging things is just being able to walk, um, tripping over their shoelaces or their shoe is coming off, holding up their backpack, holding their lunchbox if they're coming with a lunchbox and like just understanding kind of like I unzip it in the morning, I got to take my stuff out. 
um, and just learning a little bit, a little bit how to be independent when they come into school. Yeah, I think independence is probably the most exciting thing to watch as a kindergarten teacher, but it's also the most challenging thing to build. And I'm sure as parents, you're like, they really have never, if they didn't go to preschool or their preschool experience was different, they might not have really had that independent experience. And <clears throat> while it's so important for, I think, kids to come in, like just a little bit aware of themselves, that independence is built in those beginning months when they're really on their own, when they have to carry their backpack in by themselves, when they have to grab their breakfast on their own. And we as kindergarten teachers, like we will spend so much time in the beginning of the year building those habits and building those routines in so that they can feel um, confident. What you saw um, Abdul unpacking in the morning, that was filmed in March. He's been in school since August and it took us a long time. And thankfully in kindergarten, it's that same routine every day. And so it really allows them to build that sense of confidence in their independence because they know what to expect each day. Yeah, I agree. Um, definitely them gaining independence is the most challenging, but by the end of the year, you're amazed with how much they've accomplished over just a few short months. And I think the most exciting thing about kindergarten is them making new friends. They love to come in the morning, they're unpacking, they're talking at lunchtime, snack time. Anytime they get to chit chat with their friends, they love it. So they definitely look forward to building those social skills and getting to talk with their friends. Okay. Um, so what do kids actually need to be ready to do when they come to kindergarten? Like real talk, what do they really need? I think first and foremost, they've got, they have to like have some sense of who they are, right? Like I need them to know their name. I need them to be ready to ask questions. And I think what we always as parents, we, we want them to be at like 100%, right? We want them to be at 100%. They'll always ask a question when they're confused. They'll always ask for help. They might be at 25% on the first day of school. They might be at 10%. But I think just having some kind of preparation, I think what's so amazing as a kindergarten teacher is you see kids come at so many different levels. Some kids come in knowing the whole alphabet and all their sounds. Some kids just know how to write their first name. Some kids just know how to write the first letter in their name. Um, but with that sense of independence and that commitment to, to what they're doing in kindergarten, like they will grow and they will make the gains. Um, and so I, I just think like a readiness to dive in to, to learning and an excitement, I think is the number one thing I would say um, to get your child ready for in those beginning days. Anything to know, Kat, Christina, anything about maybe um, unpacking about their social interactions, anything that maybe Leah hasn't touched on yet? Um, I would say when it comes to coming into the classroom, just, uh, you know, like just knowing which way you're going, where you're going, because many times the beginning of the school year, kids who are coming up the stairs, you know, will like walk past their classroom, just kind of remembering who their homeroom teacher is every day, just saying our names is very helpful. Definitely practicing unzipping that bag because it will, the little latch gets caught in the material and then they say it's stuck forever um, is definitely ways to get ready for kindergarten. Yeah, yeah, I guess we're all thrilled we start kindergarten, at least in the fall, so we don't have to deal with jackets and sweaters and scarves right away. Um, but the zipping and unzipping is definitely something we can work on. Go ahead, Christina. Yeah, I was just saying for them to just come in just excited and ready to learn, building that confidence in them, maybe doing a read aloud um, with them or like reading to them um, a book about your first day of school and how exciting it could be just to prepare them um, better about what to expect, like meeting your new teachers, meeting new friends. There might seem, be some things that you think are scary, but it's really not. Um, I feel like that's really comforting. I also think to build up what they're saying, it's, it's just a, like an awareness of school. So like you're preparing them like, okay, this is your teacher. This is your teacher's name on the first day of school at your schools. It might look different, right? You might meet your teachers outside or you might meet your teachers before. I know at our schools, um, we, we do a dress rehearsal. So they, they are familiar with us. So preparing them, you're gonna walk to that same teacher that you met last week. This is her name. This is the name of your class. 
you're most likely going to have your child's going to have a rug that they sit on. So thinking about, okay, when we're sitting on the rug, these are all things that we're going to talk about, but I think for them to just kind of have some foundation, right. It helps them feel less nervous in those moments. Um, when it's brand new. Yeah. I think that's really good advice. Just talking to your kids about it, um, making those, that teacher's name, a household name early on and using that name, um, the more often it feels, I think, really nice when you walk in and you say, oh, oh that's my teacher, Ms. Ternofsky or Ms. Romano or Ms. Laban. Um, so I've got a lot of thoughts here, but I want to hear from you. Any misconceptions that you've seen families have about what needs to happen before kids come to kindergarten? Um, I think just looking over from the chat, a lot of parents seem like, what do I need to do academically to get my kids ready for kindergarten if they had some pre-k if they didn't have some pre-k just want to mention like everyone is going to be okay on the first day of school some like uh Aaliyah said some kids know the alphabet when they come in some kids can count and some kids cannot and that's definitely okay it is totally normal it is fine you don't need to feel like you are behind at all um on the first day of school because we are able to get everyone where they need to be by the end of the year um again just being super excited to be in a new space without mom and dad or aunt uncle grandpa just being ready like they are not going to be there could be the best way to prepare your scholar I also think like if you're sitting here and you're like, well, my child does know the alphabet and they do know how to write their first last name. I also think you can feel confident that your child, their needs are also going to be met. And I think that's the magic of kindergarten and being a kindergarten teacher because you get kids at so many different levels. And like our job is to make sure that every kid feels challenged and everyone feels a part of that learning community. And so wherever your kid falls on that spectrum, if you feel like they're not ready or you're, you're worried or you feel like they're like overprepared, they're gonna be met where they're at as learners. And so I also want to say that you might be sitting here thinking they do know so much and that's amazing. And I think what's so cool is in those beginning days, those kids get to be leaders in our classroom and kind of walk some of their friends who may need more support. And it, it just builds that classroom community. And so there's a, there's a space for all learners in those first few months. Yeah, I agree with Aaliyah. And also just knowing that kids are like sponges at this, this age. So they absorb so much so quickly. And because we have routines set in place, they become familiar and comfortable right away. So you don't have to worry about your child knowing everything. They will learn as they go. Yeah, I think all of that is great advice. And I even think about my three kids who each of them came to kindergarten with different strengths. Um, and each of those strengths was really important. So we're going to talk in a moment. I would love to hear from you some concrete things that families can focus on. Um, but I think my, the misconception that I come across most is that it's the academics that I should worry about the most. Um, and I know in our conversations before, and I know you'll talk about this in a moment. Um, and I know from my experience, um, as a principal, as a teacher of, of young kids, it wasn't the academics that usually was the um, the most important factor. Um, as I remind my friends all the time that when they start kindergarten, guess what they're going to do on the first day of school? Learn the alphabet, right? And they're going to learn all their letters. And if your kid knows their other letters, they'll skip over that. Um, but the kindergarten is really about those foundational skills. Um, so can you guys talk a little bit about some concrete ways families can right now start, um, we've got a couple months to go before that first day of school, but what can we do now to help make sure our kids are ready? I would say definitely going over how to use the bathroom independently, like knowing how to wash their hands and dry them. If they need a tissue, not being afraid to ask for one so they can blow their nose, um, practice handling their buttons on their jackets or zippers and sweaters. Um, and working on like fine motor skills, just like holding a pencil or crayons and coloring with a crayon. Um, and I think on the socio-emotional aspect of getting your four-year-old ready or five-year-old ready for kindergarten, helping them develop the language to express how they're feeling, maybe going to the library and like looking through books that name the feelings because sometimes they might just be feeling something but they have no word, they don't know what to call it. And so they'll say, my tummy hurts or they, they won't be able to tell me why they have 
if, if they're upset, they'll just say tummy hurts or I, I don't know. And so we have, we have feeling books in school that we look through and we look at the appropriate faces and they're like, it's that one. I'm like, that's called feeling tired or feeling shy. And so when, then we can talk about what you can do when you feel that way. And then I think if you, like that sense of like readiness for a challenge. I mean, it, it looks different for a four-year-old, right? But, but knowing and preparing them and saying like, there's gonna be hard things. There's gonna be things that you know and you don't know for the whole year of kindergarten, but particularly in that first week. And so not being afraid to speak up. And obviously that comes with the community being built, them feeling comfortable with me as their teacher or, or their classmates. Um, if you wanna start on the academic side of things, like I, I don't, I'm not going to say go out and buy the workbooks or start go, uh, like having them read books, like go to the library and get books that they love and maybe point out the, the letters that they see in their name, have them practice writing their first name or show them what their first name looks like. Um, but probably some obvious things that you're already doing are actually giving them the foundation that they need. So if you're bringing that excitement for seeing letters in the supermarket or counting the steps up to your apartment door, those are the kinds of things that are setting that like that excitement for learning that is really going to blossom once they get to school. And so if you're doing those things, keep doing them. Um, and if you're not, they're really easy ways to just start getting them thinking about what they're going to dive into when the school year begins. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Making sure our students realize that the learning that they're already doing is the type of learning they're going to do in school, right? Kindergarten is not that different, right? They're going to be counting objects in school similar to the counting objects that they do um, at home, right? How many kind of pieces of cookie do I have? How many steps does it take for me to get to um, my closet? you know, whatever it is, um, the type of learning that they're doing at school, they're already doing it now and giving them the confidence to recognize, oh, I'm doing this. That's kind of like what you're going to do in kindergarten. Look at that. Um, you're already doing it. Um, I thought the the focus, um, I think Kat, you were speaking about is really naming those emotions that you're feeling is a really good one. Um, you know, us as parents maybe know how our child's feeling. And so we don't necessarily need them to articulate um, what it is because we're much more aware of how they're expressing it and what their tendencies are. Um, but I think that's a really great idea of kind of using those books and looking at, oh, you know, you seem to be feeling sad right now, or it sounds like you're feeling nervous right now. And sometimes when you feel nervous, your tummy starts to hurt um, and getting kids to be able to articulate, you know, um, I think, uh, Christina, you were talking about like raising your hand and saying, I need something. I need to go to the bathroom. Um, I need a tissue. I'm thirsty, right? Um, being able to raise your hand and say what you need. Again, as parents, I think often we know what our kids need. Um, and so now is the time to kind of say, oh, can you tell me what you need? Um, so that when they're in school, they feel much more confident doing that. Okay. Um, well, we're going to go to that question and answer unless there's anything else that you guys want to talk about before we do that. We've got a lot of questions to get to. Okay. Um, so there's a couple questions coming in about homework. Um, can you first speak to the purpose of homework from your perspective um, and then give a sense of what homework looks like in your classroom, knowing that obviously homework looks a little bit different um, in different schools? I think for in for me for homework it's a it's about three pages a night for kids um, and I think it's purposeful for two ways in one it's showing parents what kids are learning in school because often homework is a reflection of the type of classwork we do in school um, and it it helps children with their motor skills of practicing writing with a pencil um, and it also just helps for kids to review what we've done in school and get extra support um, from parents as well. And then come back the next day to try again in either small group or just like show off in morning meeting being like, I practice my homework. I am able to write my name. I can trace the letter N. Um, yeah. And I think hearing like three pages, it feels, it might feel like a lot, but when we say multiple pages, like I know in my school, in kindergarten is usually around like a front and a back, like the morning work that that scholar held up. But 
it's definitely scaffolded as we go. So at the beginning, it's gonna be a page of writing your first name. And then maybe by the third week of school, it's writing your first and your last name um, on a tracing sheet and then some counting on the back. So what I tell parents is it's gonna be about 50, it should be like 15 minutes of independent work, maybe closer to 10 at the very beginning. I don't want them, I want them to go outside and play. I want them to have dinner with their families, right? We want them to be doing all those things that are so important for them to become little people. Um, and so like Kat was saying, it's just to reinforce, particularly at the beginning of the year, it's like writing um, your name, maybe doing some number tracing, just some things that we know they may need some extra practice in. And what I always tell families is if it's taking them, like when you reach the 20 minute mark, like they're gone. <laughs> and some, most kids, it might be at the 10 minute mark, right? Give them a break. And at the end of the day, if it's not done at dinner, you say, Miss T, this is how far we got. Like that's a sign to me, okay, you've got to put some supports in for them at school and at home and, and I can give them different work. So I think it, I, all teachers are not sending work home and saying, just get it done. That's not like we're a team or a partnership. Um, and so it can be an opportunity for you to kind of get a picture of where they're at with things. And then for me as well, what they are able to do um, independently. And Stacy, I see a question about tablets. I know that success um, our, our scholars use tablets. I know that in my room, we're still giving paper homework. We're still doing um, paper morning work. I know for a lot of our kindergarten teachers, um, we're still making sure like they're getting those motor skills with a pencil. And so um, wherever you're going to school, it's most likely going to be um, paper homework that they're able to practice holding a pencil and things like that for. So that would be the same for Success Academy Kindergarten. I think that's a good point that homework really is about a the parent seeing what the child is doing in school and seeing how they're doing with it so you should see homework as a little bit of a glimpse into the classroom for you and then again as Aaliyah pointed out it is also an opportunity for you to communicate to the teacher how your child is doing when they're not in the school sometimes we have kids who do better at home right um, sometimes we have students who maybe at home give their parents a difficult time and they can do things at school, but that they won't do them at home. All of this is information for the teacher and for you. Um, and so if homework is taking an inordinate amount of time, that's a time to speak to the teacher. Um, and certainly not the expectation that it is becoming a, a tearful fighting moment. Um, that is a time where you stop and you say, this is how far we got. Um, can we talk about what we could do? Um, so that leads into another question that um, has come up a couple of times. Um, obviously, as you mentioned many times, kids come in in all different places. So what are some structures you have in your classroom so that students at different levels are getting support so that they are not bored, but they're also not frustrated? Um, in our room, at Success Academy, we do have two teachers. Um, and so at the beginning of the year, it's kind of everyone is together because we just need to have everyone feel comfortable, learn the routines. And then towards like September, October, then we can sort of split up the groups and create um, scaffolded work based on their needs and their learning um, at the level. And then we split up with our two teachers or sometimes across the grade depending on where kids are falling in math, reading, um, phonics levels. I think, no, um, if you're not coming to success and you know, like I went to kindergarten, there was only one kindergarten teacher and there was 20 something uh, kids on her rug. Um, I think be like feel at ease that kindergarten teachers are ready for this. Like I said before, we know we're gonna get like kids coming in that can write their first and last name and can count to 50. I know that I'm gonna get scholars that are just learning how to write their first letter. And what I think is cool about kindergarten is in your school that you go to, it might be center time. So kids are working on different leveled activities and then they're coming and meeting with their teacher in a small group. That often happens in math and it will also happens in reading and that's mirrored in what we do at success. Um, but most early childhood rooms will have some kind of center time for reading and math where kids are broken up into groups and each group um, is matched to their skill level. And so they're able to be matched with their peers that are similar level that are able to challenge them um, to make sure that every kid's challenged and met with what they need. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, we have the larger uh, classroom setting, but then we also do break off a lot of time into small groups so that um, the small groups are catered to um, a, you know, a smaller group of students and it's working on a particular skill where sometimes parents will access for extra supports at home. So I'll send home extra packets, extra work that they might want. And then for scholars who might be able to be challenged a little bit more, I'll send them home extra things um, to work on at home with their parents, like extra challenge tickets, the same concepts, maybe different numbers, things like that. Um, so we definitely are prepared to handle um, the, the students coming in at whatever level they're at. Uh, what about, you know, a parent who kid comes home and is telling, feeling upset, maybe there was a child who was mean to them, or there was some situation that made that child come home feeling maybe sad or upset or angry. How should a parent handle those situations? What do we do? Go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, in our in our classroom space, we really try to have our kids make sure that they let us know something happened. We always have eyes on the kids, so we are watching. There's never a time when they're not being watched by an adult, so we always try to catch it. But there are times when maybe we did miss something, like in the line, there was like just a little hand touch somebody else um, and we encourage parents to just reach out to us first if the if the scholar was not able to tell us um, and then we can have the scholar come back in in the morning or if the adult wants to explain to us what happened and then we will moderate conversation between the scholar and the other scholar as needed. I think it's also important just to validate your scholar's feelings so whatever they're they're saying they're feeling their feeling that you agree with them, that you understand, but then also just try to get details about what happened and not try to interject what you think happened, but what actually happened. So letting them talk first and then you're just listening because um, that also helps too. Because it's like, okay, maybe they weren't trying to push me, push you. Maybe they were just trying to tap you to get your, your attention. So um, it's good to just listen to them, but also just to validate their feelings. Yeah, it, I know we talk about a lot, like we're in New York City. And so a lot of kindergarten at the beginning is like, oh my goodness, they bumped when they were walking to the closet. And I'm like, there's 25 of you and we're in a small room. And so we talk about, like, you can talk about it if you're in New York, when we're on the subway, sometimes we walk into the subway and there's no one there, we get a seat. And sometimes we're going on at rush hour and it's so packed and we might feel other people touching us, right? As they're getting on, but they're not doing it in a mean way. Sometimes it's just the way that, life is going at that moment. Obviously, I don't want your child to feel like they're on a crowded subway when our, they're in our room. But um, I think a lot of those times, like Kat was saying, or, uh, Christina was saying earlier about speaking up when you need something and, and preparing them, like you might have interactions with other kids that you're, you're meeting and, and they might not have siblings at home. They might not be used to being in a space with other kids like that and just encouraging them to speak up because I think those teachable moments of how do we walk safely to the closet to make sure? How do I carry my backpack back to my seat so that it's not like swinging and maybe accidentally hitting my friend as they're walking to their chair? Um, a child speaking up in that moment is a really awesome teachable moment. Um, and as a parent, like you obviously can always reach out to us, phone, email, whatever your school um, goes by, but as teachers are always receptive, but I think also encouraging kids to speak up in the moment creates that opportunity for the community to grow in that moment. And then also what we have is a, a small socio-emotional curriculum, which does give us different types of scenarios because I think often when kids especially come in the beginning of the year, like it, they, they're not really sure between the difference of an accident and like someone like purposely trying to be mean in, in a way that makes you upset. And so oftentimes when I've talked to kids in the beginning of the year saying, one scholar saying, she bumped me like this. And then it turns out she was just walking to her backpack and they were both walking and they just shoulder bumped and didn't know how to react in that way of like humans bumping into humans, little humans. Um, so we do go over a lot of different role play scenarios and talk about what can we do? Do we get upset? How do we react? Yes, we also do that in my classroom as well. We'll have read alouds that are catered towards talking about our feelings or talking about how we deal with friends when maybe they've bumped into us or how to 
when should we say sorry, things like that. Um, so they do get the chance to role play as Kat was saying, and also just hear about read alouds that will help them learn more about those social skills. Yeah, I think those are good points, right? The more we can talk to our student about what happened and talk about how they handled it, maybe how they would handle it differently. Um, and then that communication with the teacher is key, right? Teachers only know what the child told them. It's possible that the teacher is completely unaware because the child hadn't mentioned it. Um, or it's possible that the teacher absolutely knows exactly what happened, right? Because the teacher was there and, and spoke to the child. Um, but the more you communicate, and what is the best way to communicate with you guys? Um, I assume parents can call you, they can email you. Yes, parents uh, call, they leave voicemails, they text sometimes, email, we're available through various methods or just even at dismissal, they'll talk to us too. Great. Um, and then we have the very often question, um, lunch and recess. Um, as we saw from the video, it is our students' favorite part of the day. Um, do they have enough time for lunch and recess? Uh, what happens at lunch and recess? Talk to us a little bit about that part of the day, because I know at least my kids, that is their favorite part of the day. Um, at our school, we have a cafeteria. Um, lunch is about 30 minutes and scholars uh, sometimes bring their lunches from home with their lunchbox or they come get a school lunch. Um, everyone gets to pick where they sit at, at our assigned table and they eat, they talk, they talk about their favorite TV shows. Um, they share about their snacks. Sometimes they get really excited because they have the same lunch. They both have Lunchables. They're like, whoa, you have Lunchables? Me too. Um, and after lunch, we'll clean up. And then for at least in our school, our recess yard is right outside. So we just exit the cafeteria and we go outside to the recess yard. Um, it's currently under construction here because they're building a playground, which is very exciting. Um, and they get to play for about 25 minutes. And then we line up and we go back upstairs. Um, I also will say like, I know in our schools, we do play throughout the day. So their, their moment to play is not just at recess. There's also, um, we have uh, blocks, we have um, different center games like uh, dramatic play. So there is almost an hour block in our time at success where they get to play. And I know that's similar across many kindergartens where they're going to have time to play within their classroom or a playroom, and then they'll also have recess. And then additionally to that, they also have snack time, which is another um, opportunity for them to just relax, to chat with their peers, and they enjoy that time as well. Um, and then in, in my school, we also have specials, so they get to go to dance, um, they have sports, they love those teachers too, they get to have science, so they really love going to those specials as well. Yes, um, and I can speak as a former teacher principal, 30 minutes, 25 minutes is more than enough for children to eat lunch. Um, they usually eat their lunch in about five or 10 of those minutes and then spend most of the time talking. Uh, but the staff that are in the cafeteria will make sure that kids are eating um, and tell them, you know, you have a couple minutes left. Now is the time to stop talking and start eating because I want you to make sure you finish your lunch. But if you come home and you find out that your child isn't eating lunch, um, or they say they're not eating lunch, or your lunchbox that you send is coming home full, that is absolutely an a, a important thing to tell the teacher, and we will be aware of that. But that is not my experience. My experience is that kids do have plenty of time to eat, um, and then they do have, uh, obviously, plenty of time to play, both at recess, but also in the other parts of the day. And Stacey, I'll say another thing that you can kind of like rehearse and practice at home is like, if you are packing a lunch, talking about like showing them what's in the lunch and talking them talking to them about the order you want them to eat their things because you know if there's oreos in there that is the first thing i'm seeing being broken open as soon as lunch begins and uh, of course if i see it i'm like okay let's eat our sandwich first let's eat our carrots right so talking to them even just about like okay these are all the things that are in your lunch like um, let's eat your carrots for snack today and let's eat, make sure you eat half of your sandwich before you open your cookies. Just talking them through like that's the first time they're really just like on their own to eat and kids will just feast on whatever like fun things are there. Um, and so we talk a lot about like, we wanna make sure we're eating our like sandwich or rice and beans, whatever they have packed for the day to give us energy for the day. And then we can enjoy our treat after that's done. Um, so yeah, talking them through that, I think is, a, is another good thing to practice um, before school begins. 
And then to answer some questions in the chat, yes, we are always there with them at lunchtime. Um, the only time we're not is when they go to their specialist teachers, but every part of the day, they're, I at least one, if not two teachers are there at lunch. Um, and we are just kind of like moving around to make sure that whatever's in the lunch box or whatever's on the school tray has at least three big bites um, before we put things away. And then in my classroom, if someone tells me they're hungry later on during play times, I tell them, go get, go get your lunch box. You can sit at your seat and finish your sandwich if you're still hungry. I'm still thinking about things that are popping up because uh, Kat just remind me like, Practice opening snacks at your house, pinch and pull, like a little bag of Cheez-Its or a little bag of fruit snacks. Like you can practice that. I know what we give snacks that are like pre-portioned like that. So they're getting Cheez-Its or goldfish, like practicing opening bags. If you're sending them to school with lunch, like practicing opening a Ziploc, like they, they don't need to be experts at it. But I think on those first days of kindergarten where it's like 25 kids all have their hand raised because they can't open their goldfish. Like we do a lot of practicing, but um Practicing that at home is really going to prepare them for those moments as well and make them more independent so that they can enjoy their food. And then they can help a friend and that is always Absolutely. feels really good when I can help my friend open their goldfish. Um, so there's a lot of questions coming in. Um, we spoke about it a little bit, but I want to go back to this topic. Um, some of our students are coming in and English is not their first language. They're learning English for the first time. Some of our students maybe have um, speech delays. Some of our students are behind for other reasons. Um, some of our students maybe are those December birthdays, right? Um, and they're still four years old for quite a long time when they're starting kindergarten. Um, all of these, you know, and more, right? Those are not all of the, the things that maybe parents are worried about. Um, what are we doing for those students? Um, what is your experience um, and what should parents be thinking about or doing um, to help support their child? I will speak a bit. I teach, I'm a special education teacher. So my kindergarten classroom in New York, we call it an ICT classroom. So it's myself and a general education teacher and we co-teach in a classroom. So I have some scholars who've come in with IEPs and, and some of those IEPs are about speech. Most of my scholars um, are working through speech delays. Um, and so, again, I think feel confident and at peace and at ease um, that your scholars being placed in the right setting with teachers that are knowledgeable about um, the things that they, they're going to be working on. And what's awesome is their, their speech provider. I'll just use speech as my example. I, I um, talk to her almost every day. So our speech writer, is, her name is Miss Amanda. And so I'm meeting with Miss Amanda and Miss Amanda is working on things um, that we're doing in the classroom and we're a team in the same way that uh, your family and myself, we're a team as well. And so I think that dialogue is really important and your child's teacher will be um, familiar with um, what they're working on. We'll have read through their IEP before they come into the room, um, but uh, be at ease that, that we know um, like kind of what to do. And we also are planning every time I plan a lesson, I'm thinking about your child. I'm thinking about how to support them when I'm teaching whole group, but also when I might be working one-on-one -on -one with them or in a small group. So it's a part of my planning. And I know I see everyone nodding. I know that's a part of all of our planning. It's very similar to kids who we know are coming in learning English. We're thinking about them as we're planning and we're making it a part of how we're changing instruction day to day. Um, for scholars who are younger, coming in turning five in December, and my experience of working with four-year-olds, I have, um, every four-year-old I've met has been the most excited about learning. Every single thing in the classroom is magical, um, and they are just in such a world of, like, of utter disbelief of, like, they are really in school doing, and doing big kid things, and they're there to learn, and they are, like, the, probably the most competitive, um, and they just love to be involved with every conversation, so, the best way to help your four-year-old is just get them ready. They're get them so excited. I'm sure they're already excited. They're ready to just go off on their own um, and, you know, just be part of a new community. I'll also add for language learners, um, in addition to like recognizing our letters or, or counting things, something you can be doing at home is, um, YouTube has like so many awesome read alouds. So like playing read alouds for them in English or having them um, 
listen to a book on tape is so old, like, <laughs> like an audible of um, where they're hearing someone read to them in English. If you or you're, like, or a family member can read to them in English, that's awesome. But just exposing them to the language, um, it, it's a slow and steady start for them once they start kindergarten. Um, but it's amazing to see how much they grow. Like I always tell them the story of my dad always talks about going to kindergarten and he only spoke Portuguese and he was like, I was so confused. And so I always tell that story in the beginning and I go, some of us are gonna, like some of us are learning our, our um, like different languages. We're coming in, we might speak one language at home. We might be learning one language at school, um, but it just like enriches our learning community and they will, they will get there. Um, it's gonna take time, but the more that they're in that routine, the more they're sitting around their friends and the more they're exposed to that language, um, it will come. Yeah, and I would also um, say just keeping that open line of communication with the teacher, because if you feel like your scholar might need help in an area, you know your child best, so definitely let us know um, and we'll do whatever we can to support them at school. But it's definitely a continued partnership throughout the year. So always reach out to your teacher to see oh, what other supports could I maybe get outside of school or inside of school. We're always here to help you. Yeah, um, that is always the message and we want to always go back. So Christina, thank you for adding that. Um, and I saw a question come in the chat earlier, but the expectation now is that you are reading to your child or someone is reading to their child, maybe an older sibling, maybe a family member, maybe YouTube is reading to your child. You can Google a ton of uh, read alouds and what's great is that they're all available. Your local library certainly has resources. Um, there's obviously free apps that you can use that read books to your child. Um, I would also encourage families of English language learners to not stop reading in your home language. Make sure you're also reading in that language as well. It's really great for children to hear both. Um, so uh, read expose your child to books. The expectation is not that your child is reading books to themselves at this time. Um, although I know some kind of pre-K students can do that and want to do that, that's great. Um, but now is not the time to pressure your student to read independently. Um, right now is your time. Maybe your child wants to flip through books. I always say, you can read the pictures, right? My four-year-old's like, I can't read, you're crazy. I said, well, you can read the pictures, right? Um, so giving them books that are familiar to them that we've read a hundred times before bed, that they can go ahead and read the pictures is a great um, way for them to get comfortable and, and own and get excited about reading books. Um, and we will put, um, we will share this later on, but we actually did an event on building a love of reading at your home a little bit ago. Um, and so we can send that out in case anyone is interested in how you can develop that at home. Uh, Okay, so we're almost out of time. There was a great question that we want to end with. Oh, before I, I do, technology, um, I know Aliyah touched upon it. Um, kids will have access to Chromebooks in school or, or to tablets in school, um, and they will be learning how to use them in school. Um, so uh, that is definitely a part of their education. But we're entering kindergarten. I think we're really clear now the kids should enter kindergarten excited about being in kindergarten and everything else will fall into place over time. But at the end of the year, where do kids leave? Where, like, what are we looking forward to that in one year's time, our little babies are gonna be able to do when they're getting ready to go on to first grade? Um, I'm amazed by how much my kids accomplished over the year. Um, they now know how to skip count by twos, fives, tens. Um, they know how to read. Um, we start off in the beginning just learning about the alphabet and um, phonetic skills and things like that. But now we have kids who are reading level D books, level E books and beyond. Um, they're excellent at mathematicians, just solving word problems. Um, and just they love doing science experiments. So they, they've learned a lot over the year. Uh, yes, we, we do make a big deal about reading in kindergarten throughout the whole year. It's, uh, it, the conversation will always come back about growing and learning more sight words. Um, we use the Fountas and Pinnell level literacy system. So 
Um, and the, like by the end of the year, we're all, the expectation is that our level D, but then our kids have just gone way past a level D and they're all like, I'm a level E, I'm a level F. And while to you, that sounds like that you don't know what that looks like on a page, but for level Ds, they know uh, sight words, they know word endings, they can break down words. Um, and they're just so authentically engaged in reading on their own. They don't want us to help them. They, they don't want us to tell them what the word is. They're just like, I can do it myself. I'm going to do it by myself. Just watch me. Um, I also saw a question in the chat about uh, how we teach reading and Kat is touching on it, but um, that's one aspect. So we have two parts of our day where we're really focused in small groups on reading. And the, the first part of that day is called Stepping Stones, which is using Success for All curriculum to teach phonics. And that is um, science of reading based. So it's based on, on how kids learn to read through sounds, through phonological awareness. So we walk them through that and then you start reading books. And that part of our day is called Guided Reading. Um, and that's where kids are grouped on where they're at in their reading journey and they're reading books and they're really focused on comprehension and understanding characters and um, cause and effect, things like that. So there's multiple parts in our day where we're really focused on reading. Um, I echo everything that these ladies said about like, <laughs> I look at them now and like taking pictures of them for Mother's Day gifts. And I'm like, you're grown people, you're not babies anymore. Like I have pictures hanging of them from the first day of school and they're like, real people um, and they're so ready. And I think what's so cool um, as someone who teaches in a special education classroom, right? So I have scholars with IEPs and I have um, general education students. I also have kids who spoke no English when they came in, like they're all able to do these things that Kat and Christina are saying. They're all counting to 100. They're all counting by groups of 10. They're noticing things about place value. They're all reading um, sentences. They know their sight words. They're able to write stories. Like. That is what I'm saying for all of our kids. And they all came at so many, came in at so many different levels. And that excitement about like watching that journey happen for kids is what's so amazing about being a kindergarten teacher. And so um, like hear what we're saying about where we're sending them, like how we're sending them off to first grade and be encouraged that every kid came in at a different spot and they all got to where they needed to be and so many are beyond. Um, and so they're all, they're all ready. Yeah, and they're also all really independent now. They can go do things on their own. Um, they know our routine. They become little teacher helpers. Um, they also are able to discuss and debate with each other now and speak in full sentences. So they're definitely, um, you know, grown so much over just a space of a year. Yeah, all of this is so helpful. I think yeah, the big takeaway that I hope everyone has that I have for my own child is that kindergarten is really the foundation. And the goal here is to get our kids as excited as possible about learning. That is the purpose of kindergarten. Um, because if our children are excited about learning, they're going to go to school every day, eager and excited to learn. Um, and someone mentioned their sponges, they will absorb everything um, that the kindergarten teachers and the kindergarten school classroom puts in front of them, um, as well as the opportunities for learning outside of school as well. So um, I hope you leave today feeling a little bit more clear on what kindergarten looks like. You have a little bit of a mind movie that you can um, keep in the back of your mind. Um, you have advice from our kindergarten students. You have some advice from our kindergarten teachers. Um, but remember that this, uh, your own child is unique um, and the communication that you have with the school is really important. So to the extent that you have other questions that you didn't get answered, um, feel free to, if it's specific to the school, reach out to the school. Um, there'll be more events like this where you'll get to know more about the school orientations. There'll be more information coming no matter where your child is going to school. Um, I wanna thank you all for being here. Um, as some of you asked, we will be sharing out the recording of this video. Um, so to the extent that someone else in your family or someone else that you know wasn't able to join us or you were able to join late, um, you will have access to that recording. Um, we also have an event coming up about scholar passions and how and why cultivating scholar passions is so important for our students and what our role as the adults is in that. So if you're interested, we'll make sure that you have access to that. 
Um, otherwise, thank you so much for coming. Um, we are thrilled uh, to talk about kindergarten. And ladies, I know you've got kindergarten kids waiting for you, probably knocking at your door. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day and sharing your, your wisdom.